Hey, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you how you can have multiple browsers and devices in sync when you're testing or building a website. So for example, I have Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and then a screen size mimicking a phone and then an actual phone. And if I scroll on one of them, you can see they all scroll or you don't have to control it from your phone, you can control it from your computer. But the idea is they're all perfectly in sync. So if I go to the About Us page, that happens for all of them. I can go back to the home page. If I open up the expandable mobile menu up at the top, you can see, well, that media query doesn't make sense for large screens, but you can see the screen that's mimicking a phone. It opened up, I can close it. I can open up the live search overlay for all of them, I can close it. If I go down to the slideshow, I can say, you know, go to slide number two or slide number three. So everything is perfectly in sync. Also, we have live reloads or automatic refresh. So up at the top, what if I want to change the color of this large welcome text? I think it's off camera right now, but on the left-hand side here, I have VS Code. So if I just say color green and hit save, I didn't have to reload or refresh any of the devices, um, but you can see that co my cat is destroying my blinds right now. Um, but you can see that color change took place automatically without us doing anything. So this is a really useful tool to have in your toolbox and to set it up, we don't need magic, we don't need any special software that we have to purchase. It's just a free and awesome tool called Browser Sync. And in this video, I wanna show you how to get started using it. Okay, so I've got a folder with an HTML file, well actually two HTML files, a CSS and a JavaScript file. So you could just drag and drop open your index.html file on top of your browser to open it up and preview it. But what if I wanted to also view or test these pages on my phone or my tablet? Well, let's use Browser Sync. So to use Browser Sync, you'll need Node.js installed on your computer. If you don't already have Node, you can just pause the video, visit the official website, nodejs.org. Just go ahead and download it you should be able to click next, next, next through all of the default options in the installer. Okay, assuming you have Node, then in VS Code, with your project opened up, let's open our terminal. So that's Control J on Windows or Command J on Mac. So now down here in the command line, we could install Browser Sync globally. In fact, that's what their official documentation recommends. But I don't know, I just feel like at some point over the last few years, installing packages globally has sort of fallen out of fashion. It can cause problems for a lot of people on their computers. So I prefer to install packages locally for each individual project and then just create a script in my package.json file. I also like this approach because then you don't have to remember the command line arguments and settings. You can just write it once and then you have an easy sort of shortcut to call it again. So here's what I'm gonna do. Let's say npm init dash y to sort of create a new project. And then let's install it. So it's npm install browser dash sync. Okay, then we're just gonna jump into our package.json file. We're looking for this scripts area. Let's set up a new script. You can name it anything. I'll name it start. And then let's give it a value. Be sure to add a comma here, but let's give it a value of browser sync start. We wanna start it up. And then let's use an option of dash S, just letting it know that we wanna serve up the files of our project folder. So we can give that a save, and then in the command line, we can run this by just saying npm run, and then whatever you named your script. So I named mine start. Cool, so that's going to automatically open up your browser pointing towards this new page, localhost 3000. And I can click back and forth between my two pages, but more importantly, I have this open in Google Chrome right now, but I can open up that same URL in Firefox and notice that if I navigate to a different page in one browser, we can see both browsers are perfectly in sync. So now the real question is, well, how would you access this on your phone or tablet? So assuming that all of your devices are on the same Wi-Fi, well, you just go into your command line, 
And when we started that task of npm run start, notice in your command line it's saying, here's the local address, yes, but here's the external address. Now this is not your public IP, so it's not like anyone in the world can visit it. It's sort of dependent on just your personal network, your home network, your Wi-Fi. But this address that you see here for external, try visiting that, try typing that into the address bar on your phone or your tablet. Your number will probably be slightly different than mine, so use the external value in your command line, not necessarily what's on my screen right now. But I just visited this on my phone, and now if I pull back up my computer's browsers, you can see I'm not even moving my cursor, so I'll just leave my cursor right here, and on my phone, if I navigate to that other page, and then navigate back to the home page, you can see now all three browsers are perfectly in sync, the two on my computer and the one on my phone. Now this page is too short, there's nothing to scroll vertically, but also as you scroll the position of the page, that also stays in sync amongst all the browsers. So having the browser sync like this is pretty useful for testing, but now I wanna change gears and show you my favorite feature in browser sync. What we can do is tell it to watch us so that anytime we save a change to a file, it will automatically refresh all of the synced browsers. So check this out. In my command line, I'm going to press Control C to stop that current task, and I wanna modify it in package.json. Essentially, instead of just the dash S option, S for serve up the files in our folder, I'm going to add an option of W. The W means watch, so go ahead and watch all of our files for changes. So check this out, if I save this file and then start that task up again, npm run start, and then imagine I make a CSS change that tells the heading level one to be orange. So if I jump into my CSS, just write a quick rule, h1 should be orange. As soon as I save that, I don't need to refresh any of the browsers, it's just automatically, so you see it in Chrome, in Firefox, and you'll have to take my word for it, but I'm looking at my phone right now, the text is now orange, and then I can use the link on my phone to go back to the home page. Really quick, I can test a JavaScript change. So if I jump into the main.js file, just change the message that says, hello, this text is from JavaScript, maybe add a few exclamation points, give that a save. I don't need to refresh any of my browsers. There it is in Firefox, there it is in Chrome. Cool, I think this is a really useful feature because your text editor doesn't need to take up the entirety of your screen. So as you're coding, you can just save your changes and then if you have a browser up on the other half of your screen, you don't even need to take your hands off the keyboard. You can just see those changes visualized automatically. Okay, now at this point, we're going to really change gears because sure, this ability to turn your folder into the server is cool, right, just static HTML files, serve these up. However, what if you're working with a server-side generated site, like a WordPress or a Laravel app, right? And oftentimes you'll have sort of a local dev domain, and that's what you would wanna view or serve up in Browser Sync, not necessarily just a static folder of files. Well, Browser Sync has us covered there. It makes it very easy to sort of proxy a local dev domain. So I work a lot with WordPress. Let me show you how you could use browser sync with something like WordPress. So for example, here's a local dev domain I have. The actual domain address isn't important because it only lives on my personal computer. No one else can visit it. The point is that this is a WordPress powered site. And what if I want sort of that auto browser reload feature? And what if I wanna be able to view and test this on my phone or tablet? So here's what I would do. Back in the command line where we were currently running the task, I'm gonna press Control C to stop that task. And I'm going to switch over to a new folder. So this is the theme folder for that WordPress website. So I'm just going to install Browser Sync locally for this folder or for this project. So in the command line, npm install browser-sync. Okay, and then to use it, I would jump into my package.json file. Now I already have several scripts here powering my WordPress website. WordPress has a really nice official package that uses Webpack to manage your JavaScript. It allows for SAS or SASE CSS. 
So I already have tasks that manage that for me, that manage my CSS and JavaScript. So I can leave those in place, but I'll just create a brand new task or script, and you could name it anything. I'll name it maybe just sync. Let's give it a value. Be sure to have a comma at the end of the line. And for the value, we'll just say browser dash sync. Just like before, we want to start it up. Only instead of dash s or dash w, we want dash p. So this gives us the proxy option. It lets you proxy a local dev domain. So then right after that, still inside my overall double quotes, I'm going to have a pair of single quotes. And in the single quotes, you just list your local dev domain that you want to proxy. So for me, obviously, you don't have this local dev domain on your computer. But for me, it's convert to WP scripts dot local. So I'll give this a save, and then in my command line, I'll test that out. So I'll just run npm run sync, npm run sync. It opened up my default browser of Safari, but if I go back to Chrome that previously had localhost 3000 and just get rid of the index.html, right? Just visit the base localhost 3000 and refresh. Cool, there it is in Chrome. I can do the same thing in Firefox. And right now I just pulled it up on my phone. And if I go into the navigation menu and click on the About Us page, cool, you can see that perfectly synced all of the browsers. And just to give you an idea of how cool this is, if I shrink the Firefox window to resemble a smartphone, watch this. If I toggle the menu on my phone, even that gets synced across all the browsers. So I can close it on my phone. And then if I scroll a little bit vertically on my phone, even that gets perfectly synced. OK, and finally, at the end here, let me show you how I'd integrate browser sync with the existing tasks that are bundling up and managing my CSS and JavaScript. Essentially, I want to have this WordPress start task up and running the entire time, because it's going to watch me in the background, and it's going to bundle up my sassy CSS. It's going to transpile my JSX for my React components into just regular JavaScript that the browser can understand, so on and so forth. So the point is, I want it always up and running, but I also want, obviously, our browser sync task always up and running. In other words, I want both of them always up and running. For situations like this, there's a package that I like to use that makes it easy to run multiple scripts at once without having to worry about syntax differences for Windows, Mac, and Linux, right? So it's a cross-platform way of running multiple scripts. So in the command line, I'll press Control-C to stop what's currently running. And I'm going to install a package, so npm install. It's called npm-run-all. So npm run all, let me install that. OK, then back in my package.json file, I'm going to create one more brand new script. You can name it anything. I'm going to name it maybe preview and give it a value and that with a comma. For the value, we're going to use npm run all. I'm going to say dash dash parallel. So instead of sequential, right, I don't want to just run them one and then let it finish and then run the second one. I want to run them in parallel at the same time. So then you just list the different scripts you want to run. So I'll include my sync task. We chose that name just a moment ago space and then just the other task that i want to run is this start task so start okay and then before i save this and test it out we need to address the fact that i don't want to refresh all of the synced browsers the millisecond i save a change to my source css and javascript files instead i want to wait to reload the synced browsers until the bundled up file that will live in the build folder actually gets generated Right? So the WordPress or Webpack task that's going to bundle everything up and convert it, it will watch my source JavaScript and CSS files. And then its job is to output the resulting files for the browser into my build folder. So in other words, I don't want my browser sync task to watch all of my files for changes. I only want it to watch very specific files. So when you want to spell out the exact files you want browser sync to watch for, this is what you can do. After the single quotes, but before the double quote ending, I can just say dash dash files. 
and then you can just spell out files. So you use single quotes to sort of spell out a file name or a path. I'll say two asterisks for any folder and then look inside that asterisk for any .php files. So if you save a change to any PHP file in any folder, I would want that to trigger a refresh. Space, new single quote, let's say look in the build folder slash for any file that ends in .js and then another space, single quote pair, look inside the build folder slash asterisk for any file that ends in .css. Cool. So now browser sync isn't going to needlessly refresh multiple times when we save changes to a sassy CSS file or a JSX file. It's only going to refresh when it actually makes sense. So I'm going to save that. And now this is the actual command that we would run, right? Because it's going to run both the webpack task and our browser sync task. So just npm run preview. Okay, just for a quick test, let me go back to the home page and maybe change the color of this headline. So in my folder, I can go into the CSS folder, the modules folder, headline.scss. I'll just say color should be green. Give that a save. And now I'm not refreshing any of the browsers, but if I go check them out again, cool. If I check in Firefox, perfect. And you'll have to take my word for it. But if I look at my phone, yep, it's green as well. Really quick, I can try a JavaScript change. So if I go into my SRC folder, just go into my main JavaScript, maybe down at the bottom, just say alert, quick test. Give that a save. Don't need to refresh anything. The alert just steals the focus on my computer. There it is. Cool. So while this watch feature of browser sync is very useful, at the end of the day, nothing can truly compete with Webpack's dev server that uses in-memory loading, it's super fast, it has hot module replacement. We can't really compete with the speed or performance of that. But for projects where we aren't rolling our own custom, my cat is wreaking havoc right now. I don't know if the microphone's picking it up, but on projects <laughs> where, where we can't control the workflow, right, in the exact Webpack configuration, we're just using a pre-existing tool, so there'd be no easy way for us to customize the Webpack config. In situations like that, I'm a huge, huge fan of browser sync, just watching us and performing a traditional full page reload. I love the simplicity and I love the zero configuration nature of all of this. Anyways, that's gonna bring this video to a close. I hope you feel like you learned something. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more web development tutorials. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy one of my premium courses. They range in topics from HTML, CSS, JavaScript, WordPress development. I just added a 10 hour new chapter about plugin and Gutenberg development, and also React.js. In the description for this video, you'll find a link to this page that has heavily discounted coupons for all of my courses. Thanks so much for watching, and take care.